And welcome, Hoosier Nation, to our 37th episode of the Hoosier Sound. I am your host, Matthew Lukens. Our show has one main goal, to give you our perspective of IU sports from the point of view as a student or young adult. In addition, we are also giving our view on hot takes from around the world of sports. We will be going live every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m., but if you miss us live, you can subscribe to various networks so you can listen to on your own time. We are now on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, did you get all those? And our live stream will be posted on our YouTube page after each recording. All you have to do is search for The Hoosier Sound wherever you listen to podcasts and just hit subscribe. It's simple, easy, and it would really mean a lot to us if you guys hit that subscribe button for us. Social media is also big for us. We post updates for you guys on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure that you give us a like and a follow as well as subscribe in our U- on our YouTube account. All of our information is in the description below. You can also check our, our website, thehoosiersound.com, to find all of our information in one place. All right, Hoosier Nation, it's Romeo Mania. It's time for some Romeo Langford talk. So with me tonight, we have the lovely Noah Skibby. Lovely. Hi. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> Noah, you, saw the, you, I, you were watching the uh, decision last night. Uh, first thoughts, what did you think about it? Well, first, I am a little upset that I had to wait like 45 freaking minutes just for, him to, just for me to listen to this principal and his pastor spell out character and all this, whatever. It's like, it's regardless, whatever. But no, I was I was sitting with a few of my friends. We were watching it live, and I don't know, man. It was, it was just I, – I, I've had this feeling for a while that he was going to go here. I mean, I joke around like with my friends and all that he probably wasn't going to go here, but I did kind of see like – if you look, if you watch it over the past few weeks, it looked like this is where he was gonna be. But still, it's like that nervousness that he was gonna like pick Vandy or Kansas. And there was that there was that moment when he had the hats where he like tried to, I don't know he tried to mess around with everybody. And he like started off in the middle of IU and Vandy, but like once he once he reached over into IU uh, like to the IU hat, I don't know. Just like I, I couldn't let out the sense of just like yeah, like finally we got him, we got the guy and. I don't know. I mean, we're, I know we're going to talk about it in a little bit, like what we th- see going going forward. But it was just that that I think it was great because so far this has been probably the most exciting thing to happen to IU basketball since uh, since for a few years at least since we won that Kansas game uh, every, or the North Carolina game. So, and I know that's not that long ago, but I mean, <laughs> a lot of a lot of bad stuff has happened since then. It, it feels like a long time ago that we were yeah. in Assembly Hall. We had OG, and we thought Josh Newkirk was the best thing. <laughs> Josh since Newkirk is the greatest grand transfer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's been a while since that, but yeah. yeah. Oh, Josh Newkirk. They were roasting Josh Newkirk on Reddit today. Oh, really? Uh, it, was, it, it was really fun. When aren't they roasting Josh? When am I not roasting Josh Newkirk, to be honest? Why isn't anybody roasting Josh Newkirk? I love you, Josh, but. God. Um, anyways. anyways, I think what what hit me the most was the whole. I actually really liked the celebration because I was in the middle of an exam. Yes, it was an open internet exam, so I they got. Did to, it, they did it for you. They did exactly. They waited for me to be like halfway through my exam in the middle of the hardest question. When I got the sense that I think there's something going on, so I switched over to the live stream that was on I think WDRB from Louisville. Um, I switched on over to the live stream and he's like looking to like, at, he's got the, all the hats out. I'm like, okay, it's now. Cause he's, he's not going to stand up there and talk for like five minutes. He speaks for about 20 seconds. Does his little hand twitch towards the Vanderbilt hat and then picks up the IU hat. And I let, let out a verbal, yeah, like in the middle of my exam and my, I'm in a Kelly classroom. That's like kind of a horseshoe and it's like three layers and I'm on the top oh, layer, Kelly. all the way in the back. And my professor was like, oh, like, what's going on? And I'm like, Romeo Langford committed. And he's like, yeah. And then a bunch of kids in my class were like, yeah. And there's a guy in front of me, like, got up and gave me a high five. It was, it was a moment. So I'm actually, I'm really happy that I was in the exam at, at, at the time. I didn't, I missed the whole, the whole circus. But at the same lucky. time, at the same time, I feel like it was good of them to have the circus because it, a lot of those fans weren't just IU fans. They were New Albany fans, and that's their that's their final goodbye to Romeo. They didn't get to see him at the when he won Mister uh, Indiana Basketball on Sunday because they probably didn't get to go up 
to Indy. So that was their last time to say by Romeo. So I thought it was great. I think the pastor might have spoke about five minutes too long, <laughs> but uh, if we didn't know how to spell character, we definitely do now. So. I, I also appreciate at the end uh, of character, he was like, C, give me C, give me an H, or A, or whatever. And he's like, give me an E and an R. Like He was like, oh, man, this is going on too long, isn't it? Give me an E and an R. Right at the end. Let's finish this up. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, nah, I thought uh, it was great. Um, I thought it was fun to hear names that or, or names, hear voices of people who have called Romeo's games when the highlights were going on, because a lot of those people talk to the assembly call or talk to other podcasts. So you kind of hear them, but then you get to hear them doing the call and it's on national, you know, tele, not national television, but like it's on television and it's being broadcast nationally. I thought that was pretty cool. So I, I thought the whole thing was great. So it happened. He chose us. It doesn't Who's really matter it? why he chose us, but he chose us. He's an Indiana Hoosier now. Blades, fists and blades. Yes, fists and blades. So, with that in mind, what are your predictions right now for next year's season? And this is with Juwan Morgan coming back because I think the the consensus is that he's probably going to come back. Yeah. Um, but I have to put the asterisk there, yeah. just in case. I mean, as as of now, I mean, like you can't like if you're if you're just like going off what the team is now, uh, I I don't think it really changes to me that much. I think, I mean, I love having Romeo Langford on the team, but like being realistic, I don't know. I think it's a tournament team. It's a up at the top of the Big Ten team. You still have to compete with Michigan State. Uh, you in in. I don't think Purdue is going to be as high up there just because I mean they lost a lot. I used, but you still have to compete with Michigan State. There's always going to be uh, Michigan there who always recruits well, even when you think that they've lost their guys. Like, they lost Mo Wagner. But, I mean, they lost guys the year before. So let's see how I, – I, I mean, they're coming off a of Final Four. That's going to help with recruiting. So I don't want to say that they're not going to be good. I, so I think we have a lot of guys right now who are very young. They're, as they say in Hamilton, young, scrappy, and hungry. They, they, they're going to, I think, show a lot of potential this year. But I don't think – I think it would be really foolish to kind of expect I, – I mean, I know Romeo said – he was like, oh, this is the type of team yeah. that can win a championship. But at a, I, I think he's just kind of – just trying to say that. I, don't get me wrong. If we hang a banner next year, I, I, I will be in Minnesota. I, will, I probably won't be with the banner or anything. I'll probably buy my own freaking ticket because I'm going to be there. But I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably be there. Yeah, freaking there. You get it, you get it over me. Uh, update. Uh, you know, Matt is is apparently better at saxophone than me, so we'll see. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, but, um, I don't know what happened. I got lucky with the year I came to the band. I don't know what happened there. But yeah. I think this is a good team that could possibly make a trip to the Sweet 16. The only thing that I worry about going forward is like, is if because we've seen really good players on really bad teams, like Ben Simmons didn't even make the NCAA tournament. Look where he's well, at now. Young last year. Yeah, exactly. Like Trey, I mean, he barely made the tournament, but that team lost in the first round. So, say that happens to IU, does Romeo still like? Does I don't know if he's the type of guy. I mean, that if he's gonna say, "Yeah, okay, I'll stay for another year," if he's or if he's gonna take his money. I, if I, I was know. advising him, I'd say one year, at the most. Like you can't pass up. What it's gonna be three million dollars in a, in a contract, and then whatever he gets in a shoe deal because he's probably gonna be a top five pick. Like he, you can't pass up that money, uh, even if even if you want to stay at school one more year. And, and and you look at the people who stay at school one more year. Look at uh look at uh Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges might have decreased his draft stock by staying one year in college, and he thought he was gonna increase it. I don't think I can remember one person. Who has totally increased their draft stock? Look at Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen stayed what four years at Duke. I think he has probably stayed the same every single year across the across the. I'm the trying board. to think of somebody too. I mean, maybe Jared Sullinger. But I, I'm skeptical because I feel like if he had left the year before, I still feel like he. It wasn't that much of a it wasn't like a drastic change in the draft position. 
So, yeah. I no, I Romeo would go. Um, but to your point about Trey Young and um, about Ben Simmons. Romeo or neither of them had a player close to the caliber that Juwan Morgan is on this team. Mm-hmm. And in fact, they were so far and ahead of the best players in their class coming in and in the program that that's why they, sh- they shine so well. But the players coming in this class, is not a bad class. You have four, four stars. And then Romeo, who's a five star. Yeah. Jake Forster is pushing four like, Four star. He's like almost a three star, but that doesn't matter. He's a four star on twenty four seven, or two four seven. So, I mean, when I when I, the the from my from watching them on a on a weekly basis and seeing the guys that we have coming back next year, I I I think that that's the reason why I like like that's why I was saying that I think we can compete to get into the tournament. Maybe getting like like a 6 or 5 at most seed kind of thing cuz I mean you still yeah, we still I'm assuming that Juwan's coming back. You had McRoberts who played his lights out this year. Yes. Uh, and I can imagine that he's not going to play at least up to the same caliber if not better. You have uh, I was butchers. It's Finnessy, right? Yeah, like yeah, he right. He's coming here like I I like him. My favorite player on the team is Al Durham. Uh, and if you've seen the pictures from a few weeks ago, he is a completely different person. Like he is, I, I, I don't, I, I was looking at him and I was like, how can someone be that muscular? And just compared to what he was, clearly he is bought in to right. bought into whatever they're selling him that. And I, I can't imagine that he's not going to be more than just the outside shooter. He, I mean, I want to see him start driving a little bit more, which I think he can do. I mean, Duran's going to be back too as well. Um, I mean, Jake, yeah. And as you said, Jake Forrester, Jawan, uh, uh, Devontae will be back too. I keep forgetting about him too. Like Justin Smith also. Like there's there's names on the team that have a lot of potential. It's now whether Archie can get them all to I'm work gonna, together. I'm going to go with a bold prediction. If Justin Smith learns hot take, to – Hot take. Yeah, hot take. So if Justin Smith learns how to consistently shoot the three, I think he'll be a draft pick next year. I think he's got a little more than that too. I, I, I think this season, this off season, he just needs to work on finishing. Like, right. yes, he's, okay, he, he can work on his draft. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe he can work on it. But, but like last year, just too many times where I think he just made like freshman mistakes, like things that you're just like, oh my gosh, he just missed a layup. And I can't believe he just missed a wide open layup. So those are things that I think come with time. Yeah, maybe working on the jump shot. I think he's still got a few more years before he can start looking into the draft. I think he'd be kind of dumb if he left after this year. But I think when you add in Romeo with all of these players, because that's kind of like the thing we're all trying to tie it back to, is when you add in Romeo, the team is significantly better. And not just just in a way that Ben Simmons made LSU even a – made them get into the talks of the NCAA tournament. The way that Trey Young – got basically Oklahoma into the NCAA tournament. I think he makes the team better. Absolutely. And to that point, there's a, something to be said in basketball um, when they talk about can you create your own shot. And what they're talking about with that is when the play breaks down and you call a play in the huddle, you get out, you're off the timeout, you're passing the ball around, and they play great defense. Who are you going to pass it to late in the shot clock that's going to be able to get you a bucket? Last year, IU for IU, that was Juwan Morgan. Juwan Morgan did everything for IU, especially late in the, the shot clock. He passes it down to him. He does some post moves. Try to tries to get the best shot he can off, and sometimes that works. Most teams don't have a guy like that. A lot of times it's team basketball. If the play doesn't work, then they just reset and they go and run a different play the next time they're down the court. Mm. Next year, we have two people on our team that can go and get buckets, which is insane. We if, if, if we're getting doubled in the low post, we send it back out to Romeo, who's going to get us a bucket on the outside. If Romeo is getting doubled, we send it back down to Jawan. It's a good double punch that not many schools have. And not even, not even just Romeo. I mean, uh, I, he's not the kind of guy that I'm going to trust with the last shot, but if you're giving so much attention to both Romeo Langford and Jawan Morgan down low, you still have people like Devonte green who can knock down the shot. You have Al Durham. Who's I think proven that he can knock down a three pointer here and there. Like, 
you, you, you just, you have, you, I think at that point you make the defense play you honest because yeah. last year it was, let's guard Jawan Morgan because that's all we had. And then you get, uh, yeah, I mean, Rob Johnson would score every once in a while, but I think like for me, at least that was a disappointment. Wasn't consistent season. enough. Yeah. He was, he wasn't consistent enough to where you had to respect Rob Johnson or Devonte green definitely wasn't consistent enough. I mean, you, I don't think anybody really respected Al Durham, uh, or anything like that, or any, or even McRoberts, especially Colin Hartman. They, they just, these people that did not command respect because they were not consistently making the shots, or well, especially not uh, Ra, uh, Newkirk. Yeah. But um, this year you have people that you have to respect, and hopefully that means that Devonte and all those other guys have been working their butts off too. Because if because it's very easy then too to also if the first if they're when they're playing the Mississippi Valley States or whatever when it's just Jawan and Romeo, when you play even Michigan and you play Michigan State and you play Ohio State, they're gonna they're gonna get you with like you can't you can't revolve around two people. It needs to be a team team game. Yeah. Of course it's a team game. But I personally I trust Romeo with the last shot. No, I, I mean I do too. Yeah, I, I I think I've watched enough tape of him to to be like if we're down two to Duke last year. Who's who's where is the ball going to be? It's going to be in Romeo's hand, right? And he's going to give us a fighting chance on whoever we play next year because there's going to be a night that he's going to give us 30. Like he's going to explode and give us 30, 35, maybe even 40, which is insane in college. But Romeo's are just a lights out scorer. Like, and if he gets hot, like the, it's it's like in uh it's like an NBA jam like no one can, no one can stop him he's just unstoppable at times so mm-hmm. you couple that with with the fact that you're relaxing the defense on everybody else because you have to focus on two people Romeo and Juwan I think we're gonna see giant jumps from the rest of the crew which is gonna make the team a lot better we'll be better at every single position next year. I liked Robert Johnson. I liked Josh Newkirk. I liked Robert Johnson. As people. But as basketball players, they didn't do enough to command enough attention to help out Jawan. And this year, we actually have people that can help out Jawan, which makes our team not just so one-dimensional. Yeah. Secondly, Romeo has all the tools in the world to be a defensive god. Like he's six foot six at the two, which is like the average two at the consoles, six four, six five. There's a lineup that we could have next year if Al Durham, like you said, starts at point guard. He would be the smallest person on the court, and he's six four. Mm-hmm. Like we'd be a giant, long, lanky team, and I think it would be a lot of fun to watch, especially on defense. Because can you imagine trying to get a shot off on that defense when thus the smallest person that you have? on the court is six, four. Yeah. Like there's some teams that the tallest person on the court is like six, seven. That, that was us last year. Yeah. But this year we actually having some depth up front um, with uh, the center. And I hope Duran comes back from injury uh, as fast as he possibly can. Cause I, if he comes back, I think he's even adds another dimension on offense because Juwan can go out cause he's proven that he can be that, not yeah. a reliable three point shooter, but a decent enough three point shooter that you kind of have yeah, to respect. Back it down. Yeah. So, offense next year is going to be fun. Defense next year is going to be much improved. I'm so. Oh, yeah. Excited. I can't imagine that Archie Miller's not going to burn those guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's not going to. He's just not. That's, I have to assume that's going to be the big thing this year uh, or, that, or that he's been working on so far is that just like, okay, Romeo, get in here. Expect to play defense. Like, that's just the way Archie is. So I was re- I was reading an article today um, from Ernest Watford, who's the dad of Tristan Watford. Yeah, yeah. Watford. Um, and he was talking about how Romeo's commitment he thinks is going to uh, cause a snowball effect with other five star recruits, and that makes me super excited because obviously we're looking at a bunch of five star recruits for next year, um, and we're actually looking at a five star recruit that's technically part of next year's class but also could reclassify and he's a point guard his name is Jalen Laquie um and he he looks amazing are we gonna get him I'm not saying that we're even remotely close to getting him but there's 
the outside chance that there possibly could be he could come. Um, but I'm just really excited for the future. So I want you to set in stone. Where are we? Oh where are we placing in the Big Ten? And oh, the, the range of seed that we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. That's like realistic. Realistic. Man, okay. Well, first of all, yeah, so many things are going to change. Well, I don't know if I want to set it in stone, but I'll I'll give it a go. Okay. All right, give it a go. When when I look at the Big Ten, I mean, there's got to be the bottom feeders. I think you're going to get Illinois, Iowa are going to be or some of the teams that are at the bottom. You also have, um, I don't know if Minnesota is going to bounce back. Wisconsin doesn't look that great. Rutgers is there too. Uh, I'm looking at. You don't think uh, Ethan Happ's senior uh, season isn't yeah. going to be good at Wisconsin? Yeah, I don't mean, think he's not going to be good. It's just Wisconsin. Whenever since Bo Ryan left, they haven't been the same. Um, I don't know. I think you have to put Michigan State at the top. I think we were a top five team in the Big Ten. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to put – I would say five at the latest, maybe four, because uh, I want to I say Michigan State's going to be up there. Michigan's going to be up there. Um. I even though they lost guys, I think Purdue's still going to be up there. Um, I think Ohio State may take a dip, but they're one of those teams where I could definitely see them still staying around. That's the, Chris Holtman, the top. Yeah, I mean Nebraska's had, and they have a great coach over there too. So the Maryland. Uh, here's the thing about Maryland. Maryland. I don't know. Ever since, I, I just don't know that they have the playmakers anymore. I, 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 I don't know if they're – I'm sorry. What, what are you going to say? They got a five-star recruit coming in next year. He's number 14 in the country, and they also have another top. Yeah. Area. I guess – I don't know. They, I guess I didn't know that. Well, then yeah. maybe they can be up there. Yeah. That is, yeah. I mean, when you are – with when when there is a con- – in the conference standings, at least, like getting that one big guy can help you gr- like jump up. But I think IU does have more of those guys, uh, and I think they have a better team. But – Definitely. I, for me, I th- honestly think we're top three in the Big Ten next year. I don't. I don't think Michigan. I. I don't think Michigan's going to be as good. I think Wagner meant way too much to that team. Um, let's see. Michigan State will be really good because even though they lost people, they still have senior leaders or upperclassmen leaders. And they reload. I think Maryland's going to be good. I think those will be like will be the top three, uh, just because Maryland also returns their really good starting point guard, and I think uh, Herder also returns their small forward, who's also very decent. Uh, I think Nebraska will be up there. Uh, it hurts to say it, but I think Purdue will be up there, um, just because Carson Edwards is so good. So I I, I think. Three, four, five in the Big Ten would be fine. Mm-hmm. I think if we have an excellent year, we have a chance to win the Big Ten, but that's that's pushing it. Um, well, well, I would I would say this too, like and something to keep in mind when, it, especially when it comes to the tournament. Uh, I was just looking at this earlier. I'm looking at it right now. I pulled it up. Uh, uh, and on April 24th, and I mean, I know that like it's just some other guy's opinion. And it is so yeah. far before the season starts. But Joe Lenardi does preseason bracketology stuff. Right. And he has IU as not the first four out, but the next four out. I have to assume, and, th- and that's April 24th. It's like a week before Romeo. Right. I have to assume that with that, he's got us in. Yes. That we're, I, I would even think that we're not even like the last four in. We're probably a... A, I was, like at least a, at I was least a article. I was reading an article today that said that uh, for most experts, we've pushed ourselves into the top twenty-five. Like, I, I like on so. the bottom end of the top twenty-five, but the top twenty-five as it is. So I would think so also. And I mean, and right around that time too, Myron Medcalf on ESPN, he released a uh, way too early top two, uh, top twenty-five, and where he had teams like Purdue at twenty-five. Um, I'm assuming that that's got to change, that, that he would change that, which would, I think, then put us in the top 25 over them. But the only, like, other than that, the, the uh, Michigan at 17. And then, uh, let me, I'm looking through right now, Michigan State at 10. 
I'm pretty sure those are the only Big Ten teams. Right. Yep. I mean, I think you can't deny the fact that the Big Ten isn't what it was five, six years ago, back when uh, when they were when we were getting at least like seven or, or more than seven in the into the tournament. Yep. We're definitely not the team. We're not the same conference, which does hurt us a little bit. But I mean, like that still means that there's other teams in there that I think that we can definitely be yeah, if we're, with the guys. There's a good chance that we end up top three, top four in the Big Ten this year. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That puts us at, I'd say, a four, five, or six seed in the NCAA tournament. That's what I'm thinking, too. Because I'm expecting about five teams from the Big Ten to make it in. I think uh, yeah. Sadly Purdue will make it in. I think Maryland will make it in. Michigan State will make it in. I think we'll make it in. I think either Nebraska or Michigan will make it in. Yeah, That'll round out round out yeah. that so well i think also when it comes if, well, it seems like we're transitioning to the tournament too you have to take into account who we're playing off season uh, non-conference who he hasn't released yet but we do know for sure that we're playing louisville here uh, yeah. on december 8th and we are going to bankers life Fieldhouse to play butler who myron medcalf right now has at number 25 and is way too early so there's a chance that he might knock him out depending on other guys that may have committed or decommitted or some, things like that um but I mean, I think Butler's still a top 25 team. But, we, yeah, we do have those two games against teams that are, as of now, actually Louisville's not ranked. But I think with Chris Mack being there, they're going to be better. Um, I think they will be better. They lost a lot of people. Though. They did lose a lot of people. I mean, I, I, I assume that they, like, for, they're not probably going to be Louisville for the next few years after everything that happened this offseason. That's understandable. Especially but, there's a good chance, you know, scholarships could be taken away too yeah yeah i i understand that too but still i mean that's an a, a big a big time acc team coming into assembly hall that's probably going to be his first big game depending on when they schedule the big 10 acc tournament and who they play for that yep. or whether they're going on there i would i think they're going on the road because they've done at least the past two years they've gotten duke and north carolina in assembly hall i think they're probably going to do a road game now to like Virginia or something, that'd be great. But oh, oh, I mean, but even it, 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 oh it, no. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing too: is I mean, like, I mean, uh, the fact that Indiana's blue blood is what probably got us to play North Carolina and Duke. I mean, not the fact that we were actually any good, or else we'd be playing Clemson or something like that. Who I mean, we we have to Clemson, but and we kept it close with Duke. So we did keep it close with Duke. But I mean, like, in, in that they love to put blue buds against blue bloods. That's why you see Michigan State playing like. Uh, the, the like the the big guys in the, playing Duke or Michigan State playing UNC. Yeah, you'll, you'll see that because that's those are the games that people will watch, and that's why you see Iowa playing Wake Forest. I mean, like nobody really wants to watch those games. But sorry, Iowa fans. Yeah, you know, or Wake Forest. I mean, not sorry. Wake your Forest. record. I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> they, had a, they had a bad season last year. Okay, I'm not going to apologize for that. Fran McCaffrey can talk to you guys about that. But yeah. um, I mean, I would assume we're going to play someone that's going to be at the top or at least in kind of where we think our range of IU is for the for the ACC. I think they usually like to keep it pretty balanced. Like if, if Michigan State literally didn't win a game the whole season before, they're not going to play them against the number one Duke team the next year, regardless of the names on the, the – so they, I think they usually try to like match us up with a good team that fits us with to give the, the networks the most money, but also to give us and or the other school the most money and also – to give us and the other schools the best chance to win and play a good team that can actually help our resume. Yeah. So with all that, that's, that's just a lot of me saying that I think we're going to have a pretty good ACC team to play other than Louisville. We win that game. That helps us. There's yep. always a chance we play. Maybe, I mean, I would have to assume with Romeo now that Archie's going in, I think he's got the biggest cojones in the world. He might schedule another one or two ranked or um, power five teams. That would be awesome. Or, or one of those flying under the radar, like, I don't know. You know, you know it would be dope. I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but I would think it would, be le- it would be so legit if we played Loyola. That would be fun. I would love, I would love to, either, to, to have, well, like, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I would even want, just go to Loyola. Insane. I, it would drive me insane because I know we're – I don't like playing mid-majors anymore. I, <laughs> I think the last two years has taken it out of me. I don't <laughs> uh, And if, if I'm correct – um, I, I, I hopefully I'm wrong, but even then I think we'll still be fine. But then again, as I said, I'm pretty sure we do play IPFW again. I think it's a, 
I think it was a three game series is what we were supposed to play with them. If I remember at the end of watching that horrific train wreck that was IPFW at Assembly Hall this past year, they said that we're playing them again next year. And I think it's in Fort Wayne. Hopefully, I don't know. I, 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 I'm a little shaky on it, but I'm almost positive we are playing Fort Wayne again. I, I looked up Big Ten schedule and it doesn't have us. I just know that for non conference, we're playing like the Gavit tip off. Yep. And so they, we're playing um, a big, big East team for those. That yeah, yeah. And that's how we played um, Villanova. <laughs> I don't want to play Villanova, please, for the love of God. Villanova and Loyola. Let's play all the final four. We play Villanova. We play, yeah, it's, we just got to play Michigan. And who's the other one? Uh, Kansas. Kansas. I, I Romeo versus Kansas. Romeo versus Kansas. It's, it's, it's. Still don't want to do that. It's confirmed, guys. I don't want to do that again. Kansas. <laughs> no, but <laughs> fire final four from last year. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I just, I think uh, we're gonna. I I can't assume that. I would have to assume that our non conference is gonna be a lot better than it was this past year. Both who we're playing and how we end up playing, uh, because the team's better, and I think Archie knows that going in that he can he can afford to play. Clemson, who was a five seed, if I'm correct, in the past, uh, in, in this tournament, I, I kind of trashed them earlier, but like, no, they, they, they were their tournament team last year. We can yeah. play like that. We can play Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, Auburn. So oh, I don't we played Vanderbilt, man. Ooh. ooh. No, I, I'd be down for that only because they're not going to be getting the other five star semi back because he's coming off an ACL tear. So oh, like, yeah. he won't be back till later in the season. So that'd be an easy win. But like, as time goes on, that might look really good on our resume though because it's going to say Vanderbilt and I feel like they're going to have a pretty decent season next year so yeah, we should just play we should just play Arizona get it over with before his before his brother goes to jail or... I mean they have they have nobody on scholarship on that team so yeah. again that'd be another easy I'd love to play them now that DeAndre I is out. Win, but I also said the IPFW and Indiana State games last year were easy wins so what do I know <laughs> well you just oh gosh I'm just pumped for basketball season. All right. All right. That's, that's all I'm saying is not even the fact that Romeo's there, just going to games in Assembly Hall. And this year, since I, I get to be, uh, for all the fans that didn't know, I'm, I'm in the men's band this year. So I get to go to all the men's games. That is just like, it, it'll be a good time. I like to get to see them, uh, see what they do, uh, see how they, I get to see them on a weekly basis, basically. And, it, and up close and personal, not just through a computer screen. It's a lot of fun going there. Uh, I'm also excited for the addition of Race Thompson. Yeah. I think him coming off a red shirt is going to be fun. I think so, too. Uh, because I, we need, uh, we definitely need depth up in the front court. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's weird because we used to have so many guards on our roster, and now there's not many guards, and we have – a million forwards, which is just very strange to me. Yeah, well, I mean, it is also as 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 if you watch the NCAA tournament this past year, literally, like it seemed that every single analyst, the like, because they all had you know such unique opinions, is that I mean, the NCAA tournament is a guard tournament. Like you, that's why people say, oh, you know, Oklahoma, who knows what could happen? Trey Young could go. Okay, yeah, sure, they were never even. I mean, you have to have a solid team, but at the same time, it is that's why Delvadova. Went off. I mean, like you, you, you Vincenzo, or that. What about Dilla Vadova? What am I doing with my life? All right, I, 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 I gotta leave. I got. <laughs> See everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm out. What did Dilla Vadova even play for? Dilla Vadova played for St. Mary's. Yeah, I'm thinking of him because yeah, because he was on the Cavs, and now he's on the now he's on the Bucks, right? Trans, uh, grad transfer. That's that's strange. That's six foot, bucks now. I think six foot ten. Tall dude from St. Mary's. So. Yeah, yeah. Divincenzo is what I meant to say. Um, Dante. Dante. That's what I should just. I should have just played it safe and said Dante. But you know, I like to risk it for the biscuit. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, anything can happen next year. Uh, but I think most importantly, we now have the confidence in Archie when it comes to recruiting. This next year is going to show us: Do we have confidence in him actually as a head coach? That's yes. Okay, that's that's something that I've, I've I've said a lot too. Just different people. I mean, like, I think it, it's great and all to have to 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 be that good that guy that gets five stars to have you in their top five, and when they make the decision, there's an IU hat there. 
But in, and I always say that like until he lands one of these biggest like one of these five star recruits, like I, I you can't just, I don't think you can t- say that he's just like this great recruiter. Now though he's got Romeo, I I I and, and in addition to all the other guys that he's gotten, so there is for me at least more trust in Archie. And now yeah, it is. If, if we have a bad season this next year, like. I'm not saying like, oh, we don't make the tournament. Okay, like, yeah, I could see that happening. But if we like legit can't even make the NIT again, the it's it's on Archie. It's it's not on the players. It's on Archie. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, I can't even imagine the pressure, right? Like, can you imagine like you're being paid millions of dollars, but you know, like you could definitely like lose your job at any second because you know, two two games go wrong, and instead you're in the NIT than in the... I, I think Fred Glass is probably a little more uh, realistic than that. I mean, he did... I mean, there's a lot of people that thought he held on to Tom Crean too long. Yeah. I mean, it, but, I mean, yeah, there are those types of ADs out there that's, like, like you, you get fired during the middle of the season because they didn't think you're, you're living up to the expectations. I think that with the way, though, that Archie Miller did, is getting those guys to at least consider IU consistently, we're going to land a few. And so I don't think he's going to fire him anytime soon. But, I mean, unless – if they if we, like, have a terrible season like we did last past year, excuse me, get knocked out by Rutgers in the Big Ten tournament. Big then... Ten got a curse on it, I think. I think because we don't have a mascot, they don't like us. And so every single year of the Big Ten tournament, we lose our first game. Well, it's an actual theory. It's why Stanford also doesn't exist as a school. Stanford has a mascot. Stanford doesn't exist. Do you know anybody that goes to Stanford? I know some. Yes, actually, I do. I know a guy. That, I know. A, I know a, a girl that goes to Stanford, and I know uh, the director of their marching band. Okay, well, they don't exist. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, that you, <laughs> you prove my theory. Uh, no. <laughs> you're false. Yes, I, I'll stick on my uh, tinfoil hat now and. Uh... No, but Big Ten tournament. Uh, I hope we do better next year than losing to Rutgers. Well, we're going to be in Chicago, so that should help. That it's not going to be all the way on the East Coast. That's true. I but mean, also, no, time, it was awesome going to uh, going to uh, for you for me because I got to see it. So thank you, Big Ten, for putting it in Madison Square Garden. Can you put it in like, oh, I don't know, California next year, please? Thank you. Why? Get out of here. You're <laughs> up. You're up. See. You. <laughs> I love a free trip to Cali. Yeah, me too. But at the same time, <laughs> I well, maybe we get all the Kelly people to, to go see the game because they're all out there in yeah, Silicon Valley. I'll fly out there to see the game. Informatics people. Speaking, of, speaking of playing games out in California, non-conference games, what if we started a home-and-home home series with UCLA? How much fun would that be? We kick them. We are, no, I don't want to swear. Either. We I think we beat them in both times. We would, we would beat them, but it'd be fun to see the UCLA jersey playing Indiana jersey. I think that's just, and I don't know. That's just, yeah. That's something like for me that I hope that Archie kind of valued is like I was saying with like the ACC Big Ten Challenge does a good job of it, where we get to play Duke, and we'll probably play Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, or Miami next year. All four of which are really fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm just saying that for the ACC Big Ten Challenge. But I mean, just like playing these historically good teams, the Blue Bloods. I mean, it's it's gonna take millions of dollars and it's probably some ris- risky business on the side to get Coach Calipari to ever come to Assembly Hall again. But I mean, oh, playing Kentucky jerseys on the floor, UCLA jerseys on the f- on on that floor, like all of these these just like storied programs. I like, or even not even just have to, doesn't even have to be story point, just like the big name programs that like big name schools. We get like play Florida. That would be so cool. Yeah, I, grew I, up in, I grew up an Ohio State fan, and Ohio State did a home and home with Florida, and it was so fun to watch. Yeah, I honestly, I think there should be like a, a like a, a rule about how many. To, like high level division one schools you have to play each year if you're like trying to be a contender, right? So like if you want to be like a top four seed in the NCAA tournament, you have to play like three other top Okay, I don't know about that. Now, now you're just you're just I, there should be because there should be you should force people to have to schedule things and not be little sissies and try to like, well, we can play more head state tomorrow. And yeah, then but at the same Friday, time, I think you you don't you do a disjustice, you do injustice to Morehead State by you don't give them the chance. Uh, but 
I, I get what you're saying, but I think there's bigger problems in the NCAA when it comes to basketball. <laughs> I, I think most people would agree to that. Yeah. Um, but I think that's going to do it, and that's going to wrap us up for our 37th show of the Hoosier Sound. Right. Thank you, you so much for joining us. A reminder to follow us on Twitter at the Hoosier Sound, like our Facebook page, as well as subscribe to us on YouTube. If you enjoy our show, these are vital for receiving updates about our show. Visit our website at thehoosiersound.com to find out all of our information regarding the podcast and stay tuned for updates through social media. As always, send us your questions as the audience and be sure to comment, chat, or send us a message at contact at thehoosiersound.com on what questions you want to you want to have and we'll answer them on our next episode. Lastly, if you enjoy our show, leave us a review, tell a friend, share our links. It really helps us out and we can grow the contest. Contest? Grow the podcast. Anyways. How are you on this show? For, <laughs> I don't even know what I, I don't even know what I'm saying now. All right. Anyways, thank you for listening, Hoosier Nation, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>